So this is the final solution. I can log in. Um, okay, fail. Fail. Okay, success. And it will log in. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my video. In the last video, some times ago, I talked about GTest, a product to defend your platform against internet boot attack. Recently, it just released a new version 4.0. You can also play around with the demo by scrolling to the bottom and click on the demo. And here you can select up to 78 languages so i'm going to choose english here and there are three types of animation style load pop up and bind to the bottom so you can just play around with all of this and this important thing is the capture challenge there we have no captcha slide captcha uh, there are advantage and disadvantage to this that you can uh, read more on the document you can also customize the interface style to fit with your product so let's just test by logging in we type something and password and at the end we have to click to verify this is where it comes handy to prevent the boot attack so you just slide and if it is not correct you have to slide again so in this video i am going to install that version and i will demo through a login a simple login with vue.js and at the end of the day you can see uh, how convenient and easy of the gtest platform firstly you need to register you need to create an account by going to the link and after you fill the information you will be able to log in after logging in you will see two products the first one is behavior verification and the second one is captcha so the new version is the behavior verification make sure you click on that one and go to the dashboard here we are at the dashboard on the left side you can see overview the data studio customization applications notification and admin but the first thing we need to do is to create an application so just click on create application so i am going to name my application my little app and this is the address of your application if you didn't buy the domain yet you can just write localhost for testing purpose and you have to choose which one of your application purpose after it's all done you can click on confirm so we have created our application so the next step is to add an event you're going to name your event too I'm going to name my event a login event and the device is for web because we are doing the web and the type you can choose so it's sign in yeah and there are many types too you can uh, do with sign up, sms, password reset and more you can add so the id and the key is very important make sure you copy them and so in the search place because we are going to use that in our web application i found this interesting source code on the internet it is written in view and we can modify this source code to add gtest verification so the first thing we are going to do is to go to the github repository we are going to clone that so i'm going to copy the address of this repository and I'm going to use the terminal if you don't have a uh, Mac or Linux and you are using Windows and you haven't config in your console yet you can just go to the code and download with zip and in my case I'm going to clone to put in my folder 
I'm going to put the source code in the document. Git clone. Okay, done. So we can open the source code and integrate the cheat test in this login process. Here we are at the source code that we cloned a moment ago. So I'm using WebStorm. The first thing is to install the node dependency npm install. The next thing is to run the project, we can type npm start. Let's register a new user real quick. Tara. We can just type whatever we want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, new user, and we can use this to log in. Okay, and log now. So what we are going to do is to integrate cheat test to serve as a barrier to prevent the boot from logging in. For example, I use the boot to auto login, so cheat test can protect our website from boot. We will not allow user to log in as easy as before, so we have to put some kind of verification. Next thing is to go to the login page and trying to determine these pieces of code that allow user to log in. I am assuming that this function handle submit is to handle the login logic. So we are going to intercept some of the process and insert our gtest logic in this process. We are going to put the logic here because in here the username and password must be valid and not empty gtest logic okay from this point we are going to need to read the developer document so let's click on developer document on your dashboard and let's go to client since we are integrated for since we are integrating for client in this case it's web so installation we have to initialize this script in this html file so just copy so let's go to the index.html in our project and we can embed this script in the head tag yes so this way this script will be injected in our web application let's say real quick and then we need to call initialize gtest4 and to append to the bottom and we can see the parameter configuration for more the first thing i'm going to look for is the product type there are different type of how we can how we would like our gtest verification to take place and my favorite thing is the bind because because I don't need user to click on the verification I want if they click login if the user is not verified uh, the verification pop-up will take place so in this case we need to use the bind Let's just copy the bind source code. And go to and go back to the project. Let me format this code real quick. Next step is to provide our CAPTCHA ID that we obtained in the dashboard earlier in the initialize gtest4 so let's put captcha id and let's go to copy our captcha id that we get yes this case is this id above and we are going to paste that in this code and i would like to make a point clear that technically we don't do it that way we have to create 
.env file and inject in our application in runtime but I'm just trying to do something simple here because uh, it will be complicated and out of the point of this video so do not do this like me because I just want to do it simple right here so it should work well and after the initialization is complete we will get this capture object but the thing is we cannot uh, get this one out of the scope of this function so let's put a little trick to control this object so the first thing is I'm going to create a new member in this component uh, I'm going to name it gtest and it should be empty and after the initialization is complete we need to create a new variable to refer to this and inside this we can use web to refer to this because this here is referring to the whole component and if you if we use this inside here it will be limited to only this mounted so we will use web to refer to the whole component so we we assign gtest equal to yes so that way this gtest will have some value after the initialization is complete and we can control gtest here this gtest so box let's test log in okay okay log out okay the final solution is to create a new method that only handle the verification so this method we are called gtest server and we will attach that to the form so every time we shall click on the login form and we only call the handle verification to show the gtest block and if the verification is successful uh, that it will trigger the onSuccess function so we will call the handle submit because we refer the web to the whole component so we can call handle submit inside this onSuccess function and I think we no longer need the gtest verify yeah And you can do more things, for example, on error, on ready, you can just uh, write your own logic. So this is basically how we can integrate gtest in this view code. So this is the final solution. I can log in. Um, okay, fail. Fail. Okay, success, and it will log in. You can also explore more in the document because, as I showed you in the first, there can be many type of challenges, and you all you have to do is to configure configure the parameter when you initialize the function. So, I hope you explore the document well, and thank you for watching. Goodbye and see you next time.